Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the members to actually be shown in your Steam lobby. Now I'm going to refer to the previous video if you haven't watched that on how to set up a lobby already or you have some kind of lobby set up. I very much urge you to go watch that first prior to this video. Now this video is sponsored by Heathens, so thank you very much to Heathens. Make sure to go and show them some love. Make sure to buy their asset and uh, yeah, let's move from there. So all I've really just preset up here is I just have this user panel set up and I have a holder, which is just a horizontal layout group. This is default standard Unity stuff. I have a raw image set up here. That's quite important that it's a raw image and I just have a text mesh pro for the name. So that's really all this is. And of course, now there can be spawned multiple of these and it will just lay out the elements itself. Now we also have the lobby manager already set up and yeah, you can see it's just the, the setup that we have from last time. And then of course, we still have our menu manager. So let's get setting up on what we need here. First of all, we need a script for this user panel to actually initialize this properly so i'll make a new one here i'll call it lobby user panel and let's enter that script now in the script all i want is just i want a public void that we call initialize and i want this to take in some kind of user data oh not some kind of user data i want this to take in user data so we just take in that user data of course we're going to serialize the fields for our two variables right now we have the avatar and we have the username of course you can show a bunch more stuff but i'm just going to show you how to do this so the first thing we're going to take in is we're going to take in our raw image that's our avatar image and we're going to take in the text mesh pro and just like so that's basically most of what we need i can remove the stuff we don't need here and and then first of all, to set the image, we would want to go for the user data load avatar. And this needs a callback or to an action that returns the texture to 2D. So let's make that right now. I'm just going to make a private void. And this is going to be just called that avatar. And this takes in the texture 2D, which it obviously returned, which is going to be the user image like so. And now we can set the avatar image dot texture equals to the user image. And that should do just that. We throw the set avatar in here and that should work now. And then we set the name text dot text equals to to the user data name and that should be it now when we call this initialize and then through the user data it should set itself up with all the correct data it's really as easy as that so let's throw that onto the user panel and make a prefab out of that just like so and now i'll go just into the main folder here and just have the user panel be set there and now we can remove it from the scene now we're moving on to the menu or to the menu manager where we want some of this handled so i'm just going to make a new header just to make it very easy to navigate and i'm just going to set this to something like user lobby setup something like that and down here let me serialize field private and this will then take in the lobby user panel and that will be lobby user panel prefab and we also want to serialize the holder for this which is where we want to spawn it so that will be a private transform and i'll just call this lobby user holder just like that that should do the trick now we want to look at where we want to subscribe this to because there's going to be certain differences as to where data happens now you can see for example we have one on when a user joined that means you're already in the lobby and another user has joined this lobby we of course then want to load a new card that's also on the user left we of course want to delete that user's card and then we have when we join the lobby and when we create the lobby successfully so we also want to tap into these so that's uh, basically four events here that we want to tap into now let's start by tapping into when we create the lobby because that'll be the very first one so we we'll just make a public void or actually we already have the lobby created here so we already tapped into that in the script so when the lobby is created we open the lobby and then we'd also want to set up the card for ourselves in that so let's make a new uh, method in here private void setup card and let's just send the user data in here because then this can handle all the instantiation and do that correctly so let's make a var for the user panel equals or that will be equals to instantiate and then we'll instantiate the user panel prefab and we'll do that to the user panel holder or that's the user lobby user holder like that and then we take the user panel dot initialize and we just call the user data on that and that should initialize that correctly so now we can call the setup card from wherever we would want so we can call setup card here and then we can get user data dot me and that's that will just be our user data because we are obviously the creator of this lobby we also want to be able to just clear out all the cards so let me also just make a method for that what all we want to do here is we would just want to iterate through the holder to make sure we get all the child objects of this so i'll just say child like so and we'll just call destroy on the child game object like so and now this should already work initially with just us so let me try and just run this we of course need to set the necessary references on the menu manager so i'm going to set the holder up in here and i'm going to drag and drop the user panel in there let's try this now so i click play i come in here i start a lobby and there we go it's now set us up with our image and our name so this is the beginning of it this is just us that's loaded now now we also want to load when other users join we want to make sure that they load the data correctly and we of course want to test everything here so let's make another public void on user join and this will take in the user data of the user that joined we'll also want a public 
deployed on user left. This is user leave data, I think. I'll just call it user leave data. Now we can tap into these. And then we'll also have one for when we actually join the lobby, which I believe we already have. That would be on lobby joint here. Yeah. So what we we'll want to do with the on lobby joint here is we'd want to iterate through and set up each card. So let's do that really quickly. So we'll just make a quick for each loop, go to the lobby data dot members. We'll get each one of the members and we'll set that up. So we'll just say member. And then here we'll just call setup card on that member dot user. There we go. That'll now set up the user for that. And then there's just when we join when a user joins, we want to call setup card on that user. We technically could just call this setup card directly. It's not a bad way to go about it, but we might want other things to be happening in here as well. So I'll just call this like so. And when a user leaves, we now want to be able to delete the card that's relative to them. And now we need some kind of way of figuring out which card is theirs. The easiest way would likely be to just store the cards that we have in. I like using dictionaries personally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a private dictionary and I'll have the key value pair of user data to the card. So this will be the lobby user panel. And this will just be active or we can just call this lobby user panels like that. And I'll just make that a new dictionary. So now that every time that we set up a new card we'll make sure to store it in this dictionary so we'll just do dot add and that will add the user data as the key and we'll add the user panel as the value now something i always like doing when i work with dictionaries just to make sure that they are properly cleared i'd likely want to just check if it already contains this piece of user data and if it does contain it i'd want to remove it because we don't want that reference anymore and we might want to do some other things as well to that so for example in here where we also remove this piece of user data we might also just want to make sure that if the lobby user panels at the user data position actually exists we want to make sure that we destroy the game object for that first before we somehow in initialize it again we could do that or even simpler we can just use triad i think this will do it for now triad will basically just not add it if it already exists in there as to not return an error for you and also of course on clear cards we also want to make sure that we clear all the lobby user panels so we'll just call clear on that remove them all and now up here when a user leaves we can now check up against this user data so we can just do the lobby user data panels to try I get value user leave data dot user and we'll out the lobby user panel i'll just call that panel and so now we're in here it means it actually exists in the dictionary we'll destroy the panel dot game object and we'll of course make sure to remove them from the list or even better what we can do is just if we don't actually get it we just return meaning something went wrong we could just as a good measure always just log out an error try to remove user that doesn't exist like that for example and then down here we destroy the panel and we'll also make sure to remove the user so I'll just call remove on the user leave data dot user like that. And that should work just fine. Now we just need to connect these on user join and on user left. And I think that's about it. Uh, and I think we want to clear these cards, of course, when we when we join a new lobby, just to make sure that there's nothing there already. And we also just want to do it when we create a lobby, just to make sure that doesn't already exist in there. Yeah, I think that should that should hopefully do the trick. But let's get on testing with it. So I'll just connect them here. So we have on user joined and on user left. I'll just drag the menu manager into both of these and we'll get the menu manager on user join and venue manager user lobby leave data is that not what i used oh user lobby leave data that's what we want to get here user left there we go all right yeah so this should work so let me now try and just build this and send it to my other laptop and i'll be right back all right so here we go my other account is now set up so you can see i'm in here i'm gonna invite him now he's going to join and there we go. Now we can see both are set up. It looks right on the other screen as well. Now if I have him leave and there we go, he's gone again. And this will just work. We can keep this in a loop. And yeah, as you can see, things are working perfectly. And uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful to you. Now you can display other users in your lobby as well. You can, of course, display as much information as you'd like. The user data struct is so full of information. So I definitely would urge you to give that a look. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you. Remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you liked it. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one and just have a wonderful day.